Hi guys, welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. Tonight is the fourth recipe in our Thanksgiving holiday series, and it is going to be the most fantastic. And it is orange cranberry cheesecake. So come along with me and let's get started. So last year we made a blueberry swirl cheesecake and to our um, personal family holiday Thanksgiving celebration, I decided to make a variation of that with orange and cranberry and it was so popular and so beautiful that I decided that I would make this version again for this holiday season and share it all with you. So it's very similar in nature to our cheesecake from last year, but it does incorporate cranberries and oranges. And orange and cranberry are a very natural, popular combination because of the sweet tart. But it is not very difficult. It does not require a water bath. It just has a few extra steps in preparing your cranberry sauce. But it is very user friendly. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So a couple of steps to begin our orange cranberry cheesecake. So we want to uh, preheat our oven. We need 350 degrees. Next, for our cranberry orange cheesecake, we need cranberries. So we are going to start with fresh cranberries because canned products have sweeteners generally and binders. So I have 12 ounces of fresh cranberries here. That's generally what size the bag is. And I have rinsed and drained them. I've added them to my saucepan with about three quarters of a cup of water in here. I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of golden natural sweetener. I'm going to add a couple of shakes of ground allspice. This is very traditional for cranberry sauce. I'm also going to zest a little bit of orange peel in keeping with our cranberry orange flavor. And when you zest, you just want to make sure that you're getting only the colored part of the rind. So I'm just going to give that a quick stir <clears throat> and then I'm going to turn the heat on about medium high and this is going to start to simmer and you will know that your cranberries are ready when they start to burst. The next thing that we're going to need is a spring form pan and mine is eight inches and I have cut a piece of parchment paper to fit along the bottom. I find it's easiest just to, you know, take it out to where you just have the bottom of the spring form and then put out your parchment paper and draw a circle and then cut it out and then you know that it's a pretty good fit. I've also sprayed this with a little bit of avocado oil spray. This is just going to facilitate cutting and removing of our crust when our cheesecake is fully done and chilled. So I have that and I'm going to set that aside. And so I'm going to start with a small bowl. I need a cup and a half of almond flour. To bring our crust together and make it form, I'm going to be adding some butter to this, but first I want to sweeten it just a little bit. I have about a tablespoon and a half of monk fruit erythritol blend sweetener and I have one sprinkle of cinnamon. And I'm just going to stir that around. Then I'm going to be adding a half a cup of melted butter, which is one stick. And I'm just going to combine this together. This is going to form the crust of our cheesecake. Trying not to lose any kamikaze pieces jumping out of the bowl. And you'll just see that it will start to form a shortbread crust. 
and we are going to press this into the bottom of our spring form pan and we are going to pre-cook this for just a few minutes. I'm going to look up my cranberries and they're starting to get warm, which is what we want. We want them to simmer and these will usually simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes before they start to soften and burst. So we are going to go back to our spring form pan and I'm going to press this crust as evenly as I can into the bottom of the spring form pan and then we are going to bake that for about 8 to 10 minutes. You can start to hear bursting if you're listening closely. The smaller cranberries are starting to burst. Okay, I'm getting all of my crust ingredients into the bottom. And you kind of have to hold your parchment paper just a little bit because it, it wants to try and move all over. So you kind of have to hold it down a little bit while you're pressing. Which, it's doing its job because the whole idea is, you know, it not sticking. So, And I am just pressing this all along the bottom and slightly up the sides of our spring form pan that is going to form the back crust of our cheesecake. And we're just trying to make this as even and as smooth as we can. So that we don't have any holes or gaps. That is going to form the back crust of our cheesecake. And we're just trying to make this as even and as smooth as we can. So that we don't have any holes or gaps. going to come over to my cranberries and just check on them. They are starting to burst. It smells really good. It smells orangey. And you can see that they're starting to burst a bit. Okay, our crust is all pressed in and I'm going to put this into the oven. Remember it's at 350. And I'm going to cook this for about 8 to 10 minutes until it's just lightly golden. Okay, I am turning off our cranberries now. You can see that they're getting nice and saucy. And I'm just going to let them sit here for a second and cool. They will slightly thicken up, but I am going to make them even a little thinner because I'm going to take out the amount that we need and I'm going to put it in my mini food processor. So it will be even thinner when we use it because it's um, going to be the swirl in our cheesecake and so we want it thin enough to swirl. So to begin our next step, we are going to start working on the filling of our cheesecake you are going to need four eight ounce packages of cream cheese. I'm using Philadelphia brand. I find that the macros are the best on that particular brand. And I have let mine sit overnight, so they are very soft, and that is what I recommend. Letting them sit out as long as you can because it makes an extremely soft product and it's very important that your cream cheese 
be soft in this step so that your filling will um, be very smooth and velvety. So we want to sweeten our cream cheese, but first I'm just going to take my mixer and just go through. And you can see how soft it is, and that's very nice. I'm going to use some monk fruit erythritol blend powdered, and it's essential that you have powdered in this step because we are using a cream cheese, and so if you were to use a granular product, you would be able to uh, taste the granules, and we don't want that. So powdered is definitely what you want. If you want to use Swerve, that's fine. That's the name brand, but I really like the So Nourished brand of the monk fruit erythritol blend in the powdered formula. And I am going to put about a cup of this in. It's left in my bag. So I'm just gonna put that in. I'm also going to put a couple of squeezes of Splenda Zero. I like the combination of a liquid sweetener and a powdered sweetener. You could absolutely skip this step if that is a product that you do not care for, but I do find that combining the two sweeteners, two different types of sweeteners, offsets any cooling that can sometimes occur with a urethritol product. I'm going to incorporate those slowly because we have a powdered product going on. Like cold November rain Like a man without a name Like a song without a refrain That's how I feel Okay, we have combined our sweetener into our cream cheese. Now the next thing that we are going to use is orange. Because this is an orange cranberry cheesecake, we want to incorporate orange flavor without having to use an actual orange juice because that would be fairly high in carbs. So what I'm going to be using is Loran's. This is candy flavoring, but it does not have any sweetener in it. All it is is natural super strength orange oil. And you can find this both locally, I've seen it at places like Hobby Lobby and Michaels, sometimes even Walmart carries it. I order mine on Amazon, but it is very potent and very concentrated, so you only need a small amount. I'm going to be starting out with about five drops. And I'm going to mix it in, and then I'm going to taste it and see if it's orangey enough. Okay. I am taking out our crust, about eight minutes, and you can see that it's lightly golden around the edges, which is just right. It is just kind of help set it, because of course we're going to be cooking our cheesecake for another 40 minutes or so, so it is going to continue cooking, but right now it is just basically set. So I'm going to set that aside while we finish working on our filling. So I'm going to incorporate the orange oil, and then I'm gonna have a taste and see if I think it's orangey enough. So we have our cream cheese, our sweetener, our orange flavor. That is all done. Now the final ingredient for our filling is adding our eggs. And we're going to need two eggs for this step. I have let my eggs come up to room temperature by putting them in warm water for a few minutes. I have heard that you can alternately microwave them for a few seconds, but I find that warm water works well and it's a very even cooking bringing to room temperature type feeling so that um, I don't want to cook my eggs. I just want them to come to room temperature. Then if you were to take these directly from the refrigerator. So I am going to incorporate them one at a time. So 
that there is one egg in. And then I'm going to put the other one in. Everything is light and fluffy and creamy. Personally, I'm going to add a little bit more of the orange zest since I already have the orange and to finish off our orange flavor. So I'm just going to zest it right into the bowl. And zesting the orange peel is a beautiful way to get the flavor of the orange without getting the carbohydrate content of the juice. And I'm just going to use my spatula and just manually stir that around. And it smells so wonderful. And you'll be able to see the pretty orange zest after it's done cooking. Okay, so there's our beautiful batter and I'm going to set that aside for a minute. Okay, so I have my little mini food processor here and I am going to measure out one cup of our prepared cranberry sauce. And it has been sitting here. And it's nice and hot. And you can see that it has thickened up very nicely. And it is a beautiful bright red color. You can definitely tell the difference between fresh cranberries and the things that you get out of a can. Okay, so there's one cup of cranberries and I'm going to put that into my food processor. And I'm just going to pulse it. And you can see that it is a beautiful bright red jelly. So now comes the fun part. We are going to take our prepared crust and we are going to put our filling in. So we're going to take all of our beautiful cheesecake filling and put it in. And then you can just put everything right in the center because we will spread it all out. nice and fluffy and we're just going to spread it all around so here comes the creative part we are going to take our beautiful bright red cranberry sauce and we're just going to take a spoon and we're going to dollop it intermittently over our bright beautiful ivory colored cheesecake. I'm just gonna blob it down. And this is where you get to be Picasso. Or Jackson Pollock, whatever it ends up being. And I have two different tools. I have a wooden skewer here, and I also have a knife. And I'm just going to start swirling things around. And you 
can just go as crazy or as tame as you want. Like I said, you could use a knife if you wanted. And there it is. Beautiful and bright red. Beauty into the oven for 40 minutes. And we're going to keep an eye on it for doneness and jiggliness because that's how you will be able to tell that it is ready. So into a 350 degree oven for 40 minutes. So after 40 minutes, I went ahead and I reduced the oven temperature to 300 degrees and I cooked it for an additional 15 minutes at 300 degrees because it was still a little jiggly, a little too jiggly on the top. You want a little bit of jiggliness. That is to be expected with a cheesecake, but I will show you when we open the oven how you should be able to tell that it is done even if it is still a little bit jiggly. So now that it has had its time at 300 degrees for 15 minutes, that was after the 350 degrees for 40 minutes. So now we're ready to get it out and I will show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> So it still has some jiggle to it, which is to be expected. But if you can see in here, it's cracked. And cracking with cheesecake indicates doneness. And if you tap the center, it springs back. So you know that it is indeed done. So I'm going to take it out and put it up here and let it come to room temperature or slightly thereof. And then I'm going to put this into my refrigerator. And this has to chill for a minimum of two hours before you can serve it. But I am going to leave mine overnight because I feel that produces the best cheesecake result. So once again, I'm going to remove this from the oven and let it rest for a little while to come down to temperature and then I'm going to refrigerate it overnight. But you can see how beautiful and bright those cranberries still stayed. And you can see the beautiful chunks of the whole cranberries that were left even though we whirled it up. This is a very beautiful cheesecake and it is going to get you some wonderful compliments. <clears throat> so I wanted to show you it's been out of the oven for an hour and a half now and I'm getting ready to put it into the refrigerator to chill overnight but you can see that it has sunk down not real far but definitely farther than when it first came out of the oven. And so it has created that little bit of a cheesecake lip. So that when we cut it tomorrow, we'll have that little, little bit of overhang that a classic cheesecake has. So, but the top is really beautiful and you can see that it, it has solidified. There's no more jiggle anymore. So that's how we know that it was indeed done when we took it out. cheesecake the following day the cheesecake has been in the refrigerator overnight and now I am going to unmold it from the spring form and cut it into a piece so that CJ can taste I have a butter knife and I'm just going to dip it into some warm water just to run it around the spring form <clears throat> just to make sure our crust comes away from the spring form well. <clears throat> I have let this sit out for a few minutes while we were eating dinner. So there's our cheesecake. 
and you can see that it has formed a lovely thick layer very pretty crust I'm going to take my knife and slice a piece pull out, but, you know, messy. First piece is always the hardest to get out. And there's what it looks like from the side. Hi. Welcome to the best recipe yet of yeah. our four recipe series. Yeah. This is probably the best one. It's the fanciest it's one. It's definitely the prettiest, yes. Yeah. This is orange cranberry cheesecake. I was trying to spin it around so you Oh, thank you, Vanna. Do it again. See ya. In all of its four sided glory. Okay, do you tell. Alright. Mmm, it's good. It's cheesy. Cheese cakey, I guess I should say. Uh, it's really a rich, got a rich cheesecake texture. Um, I could taste the um, orange zest in it. So I think that's a new twist from last year. I yes, think. I did not put orange zest in it last year. Um, yeah, it's good. It's smooth. It's got a little tartness to it, but it's a nice combination between the orange, the cranberry, and the sweetness. The crust, I always like this crust. Mm -hmm. And um, no, it's, it's good. I'm glad you made this as a recipe that we could share with people. And I think people will really like this and it's it's a beautiful recipe yes or it's a it's a beautiful dish i should say yes if you're going to take this somewhere yeah. or use it for a holiday dessert it is quite striking yeah it is so yeah good job bae um it's a winner unfortunately i'm gonna have to eat multiple pieces of this. <laughs> oh darn you poor thing <laughs> and then i'm gonna have to eat some next week as well oh, oh man so, that sucks to be you but you know I'll do whatever I gotta do for the YouTube, right. for the tube. That's right. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks for joining us again tonight, you guys. We hope that you have a very happy Thanksgiving. I know that we are going to have a very wonderful one, and I'm definitely looking forward to it. Please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. I do plan on doing another holiday series for the month of December, incorporating recipes that you can use for Christmas time, and we don't want you to miss out on that. We are also on social media. We are on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. And a lot of times we introduce things that we are planning on making, things that we are currently making, recipes that we've made in the past, foods that we are eating, and we would like you to please join us on those platforms as well. And that is CJ's Keto Kitchen. Now, if you need any information for this particular recipe, we also have a Thanksgiving playlist from last year. Um, all the macros, nutritional information, that's always to be found on our blog, and that is cjsketokitchen.com. We also have little stories and other tips and pointers about the recipes. So definitely head over there. So we hope that you'll come back and see us again next time, and we'll see you then on CJ's Keto Kitchen. Bye. 
Let's go outside. The snow is falling down, and every child is having so much fun. A snowman is twice the size as me, with a smile as quirky as mine. We're holding hands to keep each other warm while we stand and watch a choir perform, and all the Christmas songs that we love. Yeah, all the Christmas songs that we love. And in a while we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire. Cause all I want is to spend this day with you. Let me give you a Christmas. A moment we'll fill with love and joy. Mm -mm, so beautiful, kissing on a mistletoe, baby, with you. I don't need any presents. As long as I spend this day with you, mm -mm, so beautiful, kissing on a mistletoe, baby, with.